I just got this in the mail. It was just delivered. It's never been opened. It is something that we can use in the boat when we're fishing to keep us safe. So I am going to open this. We're gonna see it for the first time. We're gonna eventually try it out. So come along, maybe it will help you too. Hi, my name's Jerry. I'm a twin troller boat owner. I'm a lifelong fisherman and I also hold a master captain's license. Now, how do you get that license? Well, it's a combination of knowledge and experience, exams, school, and all that kind of thing. And one of the biggest things that they emphasize on you is safety because you're responsible for many other people, at least potentially. So having equipment that will keep you safe is really important. I often am contacted by people that see my channel that want me to use their product and give an honest review. Well, most of those are junk and I don't want anything to do with them. I really don't like doing that unless it's something that I think would help my subscribers. So once in a while, I get something like that. And in this case, someone contacted me with something I think would be useful on a boat when you're out fishing or just boating. That showed up today. I know what it is, but we're gonna open it together. We're gonna to look at it. We're gonna assess it. And at some point, we're gonna go take it out and try it. Hopefully it will help you. And if you stay to the end, I will also give you information about a discount that they are offering for a limited number of days for anyone watching this to buy the product. So come along. I think you're gonna like this. All right, here's the box, unopened. Let's open it. And we'll look at it together for the first time. Let's figure out what it is. Retivis, R-E-T-E-V-I-S is the name of the company. It's a, it's a model RM21, output five watts, voltage 7.4 volts. It's something that sends a signal and gets it back. Here's a manual, user manual. Here is an antenna. Here is a marine radio. It's a nice looking radio. That's a charger. 110, plug it into the radio to charge the battery. It has an onboard battery. There's a base for this, so this must plug in. We'll have to look at the instructions and figure out where to plug it in. So there's a base, holds the radio, and there's a place right here that you screw in the antenna on the bot on the top. Take that off just to show it. It's not huge, but it's a good size. It's got a nice feel to it in my hand. I turned it on. There's a button on the side for transmit and a receive. I'll have to look at the manual to figure out what all this is. All right, let's look at the manual here. Well, it took me just a little bit to find the place to plug in the charger. They tell you to make sure that your radio is in the off position. And on the bottom, there's a port right here. There's a little notch here, it's in there. You plug it in like that, and then you stick this through the side, whichever side you wanna put it on. And then naturally you're gonna plug this in. And I plug it in. There are tabs on each side to connect to the two uh, terminals on each side plug it in, it lights up, and it starts to show that the battery is being charged. Now, this is a lithium ion battery inside there. It says that it is not charged when it comes to you. Clearly it has some kind of charge when I turned it on. And they tell you to charge it until it's full. And the manual says it will take two to three times of using this and charging it and using it and charging it before this will come to the point where the battery will fully charge. I've gone through the manual with my neighbor, John, who was also a boater and used, like I have, many marine 
radios. And it took us a little while to just figure out everything, but eventually we did. The manual could be a little bit clearer. It tells you how to do things, but it kind of doesn't explain what it is that you're doing or why you would do some of the functions that it has here. But we did figure them out. So let me just say that right in the beginning. Now, I wanna talk about the radio itself and some of its functions. I'm not gonna go through everything that's in the manual about how to do each of the functions, but I just thought I'd show you. Now, here is, again, how you turn it on. And it comes up, I believe, to the probably the last channel that you did. But I, let me show you something right off. One function of this is that if those two tabs get wet in the body of water, this is what happens. In, out, in, out. And if you leave it in, it will flash that red screen. Now that's pretty handy. Now let me just dry it off. It will continue to do that and it functions. If I push the button, it will do that. And then once you use it the first time, the red screen goes away. What happens if you're in the boat and for whatever reason, you have turned the radio off? Maybe it's on your belt and you don't realize it, that you've turned it off or you knocked it overboard. What happens then? Now it's in the off position. Those tabs just got wet. It illuminates the screen and does the same flashing. However, since it's not turned on, you cannot, if I push the transmit button, nothing happened. But it at least lights up. So if it's in the water or if it's in low light conditions, hopefully you can find your radio so that you can use it in an emergency. I've dried it all off and see when I push the buttons, nothing happens. But if I turn it on, the red goes away and it goes back to normal. Now that's pretty cool. I've never seen another marine radio that does that. Maybe there are some, but not the ones that I used. Let me just give you a quick rundown of the radio itself. Your on off switch and your volume is here. This is a waterproof tab here. If you undo it, you can buy a earpiece, a mic earpiece set up to plug into here. And when you're not using it, you just put this cover back on and it stays waterproof. Naturally, here's your antenna. You saw me screw that on earlier. Here's your transmit button on the side. This button, that there, there's two halves of this. The top one turns on and off your noise reduction. And then when you have noise reduction on, it says NRC. And then when you push it again, it turns off. There's also AL, which stands for alarm, and it's got lines across it. So when your NRC is on, your alarm function is off. Nothing on this side nothing on the bottom. And again, here's the two tabs that connect to your charger. Now on the back, there's a radio belt clip, pretty sturdy, works pretty good. Let me make a comment about the whole radio. It seems fairly well built. It's not real heavy, but again, it's not lightweight. Battery must be in here. You'd have to use a screwdriver to open that up. I'm not doing that uh, because there's no need to do that. There's 13 and see in the corner, it says low. So this would be the kind of thing that if you're on some kind of a ship and you wanna use this while you're around the ship and talk to other shipmates, it will broadcast in low so that it's not transmitting a far distance and interfering with that, that other boat that's not that far away. When you get off of 13, there's 14 and you see it went to high. Well, that's cause I have the radio on high, but let me go back to 13, it's on low. This button allows you to change from low power, medium power, and high power. But as you see, while you're on 13, it gives you an error because 13 cannot broadcast on anything except for low. So let's move up. Now I'm on 14. I have it on high because I set it there. But if you push this button, it's in low, it's in the middle, MI, and it's HI for high. So you just use whatever you want to use. But if you wanted to make sure that whatever you're using, you're not bumping into it and knocking your functions off. See, there's a little key here on this one with the high-low. Push it and hold it, and a key pops up here. You can see it, so it's locked. Now you can still broadcast, 
So it just said transmit, but none of these functions work until push that in, hold it, and then the lock goes off. So you can see I'm on 15, just to give you an idea. If I push 16, push this button, says 16, it will go to 16. If I push it again, it'll go back to the channel that I originally was. But if 16 is the universal channel that everybody monitors, initially some people go there to try to find other people and then they move to a different channel. Or if there's an emergency, that's the channel you should be broadcasting on because everybody's monitoring that, including the Coast Guard. Now you can see I have it on 68. 68 is a general usage channel. And when John and I are going to uh, use the radio later, John's my neighbor, we will be on 68. There isn't anybody else that's been broadcasting on here, so we would not want to interfere with other people. But if I'm trying to call John, I push the call button if I want to get his attention. I don't have to do that. All I have to do is key it. And you can see where the little bar shows up for transmit right there. And then you can say, John, and whatever you want to say. But if you want to get somebody's attention, you push the call button. And there are multiple sounds that you can do in the manual. It explains how to do those to make a change. Here is a menu button, squelch, scan, primary watch, call tone, busy lock, roger, backlight, brightness, beep, NRC, battery save, weather alert. And when you pause for a second, it will go back to here. Now I have channels in memory here. See the M next to the 68? If I go to 67, there's no M. Now once I get back to 72, I mark that with an M. And again, back to 68, there's an M. How did I do that? Well, you see the 68? I'm going to mark it as a favorite and it's going to put that in memory. So if I push favorite and hold it, see the, the M disappeared. So right now, the only channel I have in memory is 72. But if I put 68 back on, then when I push scan, it will go between 72 and 68 and just scan. And if either of them get used, it will stop. Now, one real nice feature of marine radios is that you can get the weather report. Kind of important when you're out on the water. D-W-U-I-C. This button right here, push D-W, and it goes to the weather channel. The weather channel, I have channel one, three, four, five, six. And in the manual, it tells you what frequency each of those are. And right now, in the house, the weather channel is not broadcasting well enough that I'm picking it up. But if I went outside, I would immediately get the weather channel on channel three. And in my area, I'd also get it on one. So I have it set up to be on those two channels. That's channel 71. That's one of my favorites. So if I want to go to my favorites, I just push it. I keep pushing it so I have 71. 72 and 68 all have the M next which so they're my favorites. If I push the DW, I get the weather, but if I push it and hold it, this changed to a whole different set of numbers for radio channels and it says INT. So I'm on international channels. If I push it and hold it, CAN Canada, this will now communicate to Canadian channels. Now you gotta be in Canada to do that. The radio doesn't make it that far. Same with the international, you gotta be somewhere in the international areas. But how do you get back to the United States? Well, I hold it one more time and it goes back to USA. So these are all the channels that will be within the United States area that you can use this with. But if you traveled overseas in the boat, you could use the international, or if you went up to Canada, you could use theirs. Well, you remember John, famous fisherman that has fished with me in the past. And I eat my vegetables. Well, what a fine lad you are. <laughs> well, John is gonna stay here at home base and he's gonna communicate with me with the radio and I'm gonna drive away and we're gonna see how far we can go. But we gotta take into account that 
this is not going to be line of sight like it would be if we were on open water. So on open water, I would expect a little bit more distance than we're going to get uh, because there's houses and buildings and trees and stuff in the way. Sound good, John? Excellent. Okay. Well, let me just say this for the record. We are both on channel 68, which is an open hailing channel and uh, that's where we're going to communicate with each other so that we're likely not interfering with anybody else. This is the half mile radio check. How do you copy? I hear you loud and clear. Radio check at seven tenths of a mile. Still hear you loud and clear. One mile, radio check. I hear you loud and clear. One point seven mile radio check. You're breaking in and out. I heard one point seven mile radius. Copy. At about one point seven miles, we're starting to break up enough that I can only hear him at times, but I still am hearing him somewhat. One point seven mile radio check with the NRC turned off. How do you hear? I hear you loud and clear with a little bit of static, but I can clearly hear all of your words. Over. I'm going to go a little bit farther. 1.9 mile radio check. How do you clear? Loud and clear with static. Over. 2 mile radio check. My conclusion is that about 1.9 miles uh, we were last able to communicate with each other and at 1.7 miles is where I turned off the NRC uh, noise reduction and that got me another two tenths of a mile but now I'm at two miles even and uh, we can't communicate at all but like I said we're in a populated area I'm not on open water and I actually did a uh, check. This location I'm standing in is 11 feet lower in elevation than it is back where John is. But it seems to work pretty good and I'm sure it works better on the water. I made a list of pros and cons regarding this radio. Let me list the pros. I like the belt clip. The radio is quite rugged, very well built. It's very comfortable in your hand. I like the ability to use this in international, Canadian, and United States channels, so literally around the world. It has the built-in lithium battery inside, and it has the charger stand, so I'm not changing batteries all the time. It has a good sound to it. It has lots of usable features. It has a radio overboard illumination that I showed you. That's pretty ingenious. And as you already saw in the using of the radio with my neighbor, John, the radio broadcasts and receives as well as any other marine radio that I've used. This is also not very expensive. And like I said, stick around a little bit longer and I'm going to give you a code that you can even get a better discount for purchasing this radio. What are the cons on this? The manual has already made comments about to me is not all that clear as it should be, I should say. There are functions in here. If you're not used to using a marine radio and you're getting this for the first time, you may not know what the heck they are and what they do and why you would use those. Now, I've got experience using those, John also, and we sat down, him on one end of the house, me on the other end, both holding radios in our hands, and it took us a little while to figure out all the functions that are in here. Once I figured out how this manual kind of works, it was a little bit easier, but again, I didn't necessarily know why I was doing some of these if I'd never used a marine radio before. But we did eventually figure it out. 
it wasn't that bad. To get to the squelch fu function, you have to use go through the menu. Normally, a radio would have a knob just for the squelch. You would turn it on, and we have another button that was just designated for the squelch. And you turn that because you want the squelch to just be turning off. That gives you the most range to use this in. It broadcasts its farthest distance. It receives its farthest distance. So what is this radio? It's a Redivis, R-E-T-E-V-I-S, marine radio. Hopefully you can read that. And it's a model RM21, power output is five watts, voltage is 7.4. So I hope you liked this item, the radio. I think it would be helpful to have on a boat. That's why they make them. It's a marine radio, it floats, it broadcasts quite a distance, and it also has an emergency channel on there. It's all the way around good to have in a boat. So just go to one of these three websites, no code necessary, at checkout, you will automatically receive $5 off your purchase. It is a limited number of days. $5 off from November 5th through November 10th, 2022. If you're interested, you need to go use it now or it won't be available down the road. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye now.